Today we're testing the extension carbon street trials bike. The only question I have is, should we use a hammer and test our carbon street trials bike the way that Fabio Winmer did with his? Behind me in these boxes is the Extension Avenger. It's a 24 inch carbon street trials bike. I normally recommend Extension as kind of a starter bike for people who are getting into trials, especially street trials, because they make a lower end model that's perfect for people to start with. But this is their top of the line model. We're gonna open it up, get it all dialed in and give it a good test. Aside from the fact that I'm about to unbox and ride a carbon street trials bike, the other thing I'm excited about is that Trials Superstore actually sent me this bike to test and share with you. I've bought a handful of bikes from Trials Superstore in the past, but now we're gonna have a chance to try out a bunch of new ones, starting with this bike right here. So let's get into the unboxing. Now the million dollar question is, which box are we gonna open up first? This is the first time I've seen a bike shipped in two separate boxes, but maybe it makes sense that they can customize the bikes a bit better by sending out different wheel sets to match different frames. Who am I kidding? It's a carbon frame. We gotta see what this thing looks like. All right, <laughs> here we go. We're off to a great start. This bike comes with an 80 millimeter rise street trials handlebar made of carbon. I've been saying for a long time that Street Trials complete bikes need to come with an 80 millimeter rise handlebar and extension listened. All right, time to remove a lot of packaging. Here we go. On first look, everything on this bike is super clean. You've got brakes that are internally routed here. You've got the headset built in. The chain tensioner on the very back here is super dialed in. Everything on here seems pretty well thought out. I hope it rides as good as it looks. So now that we did the fun part, let's get all the components out of the other box and start piecing this together. Box number two. This is gonna have all the rest of the components and the wheels in it. So let's open it up and then we can start building this bike. Here we go. We've got some spank rims with Continental tires. Very familiar looking wheel set. Got the seat, got some grips, and two mystery boxes. Mystery box number one, has the stem and the chain. Mystery box number two has the pedals. Here's the thing that's kind of melting my brain about this unboxing so far. This complete bike is $3,000, which is $100 more than the top end aluminum street trials bike. So my expectation in any bike manufacturer situation doing something like that would be that I'd pull out this amazing carbon frame and then I'd pull out all these low tier parts to go on the carbon frame. That's how a bike manufacturer would traditionally keep a bike within a price range. But the thing that's blowing my mind is that all the parts I've pulled out have been really high end as well. I pulled out an 80 millimeter carbon street trials handlebar. I pulled out these beautiful looking pedals. Everything that's on this bike is actually really nice. Here's another example of what I mean. This bike comes with a pivotal seat. This is top end BMX technology. You've got your seat and your seat post and you have an Allen wrench hole right here at the top of the seat and that's what connects the two together. They've thought of all kinds of special little elements to really take this bike to a new level. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna throw it in the stand and piece it all together. There's a lot of small details on this bike that I wanna show you, so we'll go through that as I'm putting it all together. It's always interesting to see how different Street Trials brands deal with putting the front brake through the steerer tube or your fork. A lot of the times they have a thread here on the inside of the steerer tube and then the top cap is also threaded. The way extension does it is the top cap has a hole in the top and then the outside of the top cap has an area where you can take a wrench and tighten it on. Some of the other brands actually have a hole for an Allen wrench in the top cap next to the space for the front brake. So this is slightly different. Before I put the fork into the bike, I wanna show you one more thing and that's the tapered steerer tube. So it means it's an inch and a quarter at the bottom here and an inch and an eighth at the top here. And the reason for that is just to make this section super beefy. Now that everybody is jumping to their front wheel, they wanna make sure this part of the bike is the strongest it can be and that's why it's flared out like this. Before we put this on the bike, I just wanna give Extension one more shout out for specking the right size handlebar on their complete Street Trials bike. This is exactly the rise that you need to ride Street Trials and they got it right. As expected, both the front and back wheel of this bike come with through axles. But what's really interesting is how well they integrated the chain tensioner in the rear dropout. It's super tidy in here and I have a feeling it's gonna work out perfect. If I got this bike and I was taking it out of the box for the first time, there are a lot of things to be really excited about. Specifically, the frame and fork, the fact that they got the high-rise handlebars right, the cranks, the integrated bash ring, this really clever seat post here. A lot of the bits on here are just well thought out details. 
But not every bike is gonna to be totally perfect right out of the box. Sometimes it's for customizing it to your own preferences. Sometimes it's helping the bike reach its maximum potential. For me, I would change the brakes to fit my preferences. I'd go back to my Hayes Dominion brakes. And for the wheels, I would change those out because I think you could probably lose a fair bit of weight in the wheels. And you could also get rid of the freewheel in the back here and put a proper hub in there that would help you get even higher engagement. Ultimately, I think they've done a good job putting this bike together. And now let's put it on these boxes and give it a first test. One thing I noticed about this bike as I'm just getting ready to ride it is that it doesn't have a chain state protector, which pretty much every single trials bike has. So if you're ordering this bike, make sure you add a chain state protector to your order. It's just a little piece of fabric that wraps around the chain state. And when you get chain slap, it protects the frame. I'm just gonna make one out of the packaging that it came with, but highly recommended. You definitely wanna have that before you ride this bike. Hopefully this works. Here are a couple first ride impressions of this bike. The carbon frame makes a huge difference. I've ridden a carbon mod bike in the past too, and the frame material when it comes to power transfer from the pedals to the bike is noticeable. You can feel how stiff this frame is. I went up on the back wheel and it just felt so solid. The other thing that really stands out to me about this bike, especially compared to my Inspired 4 play, is how much more sort of BMX-y the geometry is. If you're a big fan of spins, of half cabs, of all these things, the head tube angle is just a little bit steeper and it makes it a bit easier to spin this bike. The trade-off is that it can sometimes feel a little bit more twitchy than the Inspired 4 play, but if you're really into that BMX street style where you're doing lots of spins and you wanna have a steeper head angle, this bike actually is great for exactly that. One other thing I wanna say is that the brakes that are on this bike that I'm riding are not actually the ones that are spec'd on it. They had a small supply chain issue, so I've got SRAM level brakes on it right now, but I think for the proper test, I may switch to something I'm more comfortable with, like some Hayes brakes or even some Magura MT7s. But overall, I think what's cool is that this bike rides different than the Inspired 4 Play and in some meaningful ways. Not to say one is better than the other, it's just more matching a preference of a rider who wants to ride a super BMXy spinny style versus kind of like a half trials, half street style. They both have their own strengths and I'm excited to see where I can go with this bike in the next session. If this bike is calling your name, there's a link in the description where you can pick it up from Trial Superstore. In the next video, we're gonna take it out into the streets and give it a proper test. And in the meantime, if you've been looking at this 24 inch street trials bike and wondering, is 24 right for me? Is 26 right for me? Is 20 inch right for me? There's a video right here that's gonna help you decide.